Welcome to my quarantine series of videos about wildlife filmmaking. I'm stuck here in this hotel room for the next seven days, so I thought I may as well use my time fairly productively and share some information about wildlife filmmaking. Today we're going to be talking about my journey as a wildlife cameraman, starting from zero and coming to where I am today as a as a professional wildlife cameraman. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. I have always loved wildlife. It's just part of me. I grew up with a passion for, for nature and I suppose it, it never really went away, but I ignored it for quite a while. After school, I went off to uni and I did a biochemistry degree because I like biology and I quite like chemistry. And after that, I worked as a pharmaceutical consultant, writing reports about drugs for three or four years. But there was always something in me that wanted to do something a bit different, a bit more exciting, and a, and a bit more involving wildlife. And so after a while of working as a biochemist, I thought there must be something more interesting I can do. And so I decided to make this switch to become a wildlife cameraman. I left my job in the middle of the recession and I went to the University of Salford and I did a master's in wildlife documentary production. And that was a year long course. On the course, we had loads of different instruction from editors, production managers. We learned about biology, we learned about editing, we learned how to use cameras. One of the highlights was a masterclass from David Attenborough. So that was an amazing, amazing thing to, uh, to do. Part of the master's degree was my dissertation. I made a film about Barbary macaques. I went out to Morocco and made a 13 minute film about the monkeys out there. I submitted that film to the World Screen Film Festival in 2012 and I got a nomination for the Newcomer Awards. It was pretty much the first film I'd ever made, and it was nice for industry professionals to say, yeah, you've done an all right job. I didn't win the category, but even to get nominated was amazing. After Wild Screen, I actually went to the BBC and ended up getting some work experience, and it was amazing to be working in the hallowed halls of the Natural History Unit. While I was there, I got in touch with a few people and started doing a little bit of filming work, filming stuff in slow motion. We got to film goshawks and golden eagles and barn owls and mantis shrimps. And they're, they're all online on the, uh, on the, the BBC Earth YouTube page if you go back and, and have a look for them. My first proper job working on a, on a production was working on The Burrowers, which was a, a series about British animals that live under the ground. So we had rabbits, we had badgers, we had water voles, we even had moles. I was working as an assistant on that, and I worked with Simon King, I worked with Mark Yates, I worked with um, Paul Williams, who's a, an amazing 3D um, DOP. I also got to work with Chris Packham for the first time, which was, which was really, really nice. Working on the burrowers is where I first started realising about networking and building up that network of, uh, of contacts and staying in touch with people, really. After working on the burrowers, I went on to Springwatch. That is an amazing, amazing production to work on. It's a British institution, really. It is on every year and people love it. So I had the opportunity to work as a runner. Working as a runner on the watches is a really, really busy job. You're an integral part of the team. You've got to be somewhere all the time. There's always something happening. And as a runner, you get to know everyone on site. It is one of the best roles to get your foot into wildlife TV. After Spring Watch, I went on and worked as a junior researcher on a programme called Harvest. And that was an interesting job. I realised that the production side of things wasn't necessarily where I wanted to be. 
it was the camera side of things. I enjoyed being out in the field. After harvest, I went back onto the watches and went on to autumn watch and winter watch. And just such a fun, fun experience. So that was 2013. In 2014, that's where my first experience of foreign filming came. And I went out to Sri Lanka and filmed on a National Geographic series called Wild Sri Lanka. I was out there as a camera assistant and I worked alongside Paul Stewart on the Jungles episode. Your first foreign shoot is really important because it shows that someone has put their trust in you. A foreign filming trip is really expensive. And so for someone to trust you and take you out on location, it shows that you're trustworthy and you have some skills that are useful. I went out on two month long shoots and in 60 days, we pretty much filmed an hour of TV. Most of the shoots that I go on will film five minutes in 30 days. So filming 60 minutes in 60 days is, yeah, yeah it's, we were working very, very hard and efficiently on that shoot. After Wild Sri Lanka, I headed out to New Zealand, and that was with the same series producer who'd taken me out to Sri Lanka. And we were out in New Zealand filming Kiwis for a Natural World Attenborough's Big Birds. That was my first programme that had David Attenborough narrating. To have the, the great man himself talking over work that you've done and footage that you've made it was just spectacular. I suppose quite a proud moment for me really. After that I went to Texas and Belize with the director of The Burrowers. So you can see how it's all tying in now. We were filming Mountain Lions and Margay. So that was 2014 and it felt like a real step up from the previous year, which had all been UK based. 2015 started with a trip out to New York State. We we're filming American Martins for The Hunt and I'm really glad that I got to work on The Hunt. It's still, I think, my favourite series. After The Hunt, I did Spring Watch, Autumn Watch and Winter Watch. In between those, I did a couple of other things because it was quite a slow year. I did worked on a Red Bull series called Ultimate Rush and also did a bit for CBeebies filming some of their live summer events. In 2016, I went out to Jackson Hole for a programme called The Great American Thor. I was assisting out there again, but doing loads of time lapses and a little bit of second camera work as well. That year I also did some work on a programme called The Secret Life of Puppies, which was adorable to work on. I was filming on and off as these puppies grew throughout the year, and that was nice to keep me keep me going. That was my also my first series working as the main cameraman on a shoot. I also did some work on A Natural World that year, H's for Hawk, with the same series producer who I'd worked with out in Wild Sri Lanka and also on the Attenborough's Big Birds. So it's nice to see that again tying in. 2016, thinking back now, it wasn't a very busy year and I remember it at the time being so happy to get a day of work on the puppy show. 2017 I went out to Indonesia for Extraordinary Rituals. We were there for this big horseback spear fight and I was filming slow motion as they were bombing around on horses throwing spears at each other. An amazing one, one of those once in a lifetime experiences. 2017 I also went out to Costa Rica and that was with a similar team to the one that I'd been out to Texas and Belize with. So that's an example of that network again coming together and it's always nice to be invited back by a production company. After that I did some second camera and assisting on Attenborough's Wonder of Eggs which was another natural world, same production company, same series producer. It's all, also so nice to work with David Attenborough. Every time, every single time, it's lovely to, to get that call. After that, we went out to Pennsylvania for One Strange Rock and filmed Fireflies. That was an amazing shoot. I was out there doing time lapses, second camera work, and a bit of assisting as well. At the end of 2017, I went out on 
a really big shoot for me. It was eight weeks long and I was out in Botswana and Zimbabwe filming on a Disney film. I was assisting on the main feature film. There were four different camera teams and I was making sure that everyone was organised, everything was clean, everything was sorted, everything was ready to go. But I was also filming for the behind the scenes. Every night we were travelling around and filming these lions hunting elephants. And so I was in the back of the car filming with Gavin as he was filming the uh, these hunts. An amazing, amazing experience. It's really hard to explain how intense it is to be right next to a pride of lions as they're all roaring. You've got elephants trumpeting in the distance and you're in a car with no doors. Mind-blowing experience. 2018 took a step up again from that. I started off doing some work on The Secret Life of Puppies again, it was the next series. I then went on to a series called Wild Whales and I filmed ponies up in Snowdonia. Really nice to showcase whales in its beauty. After that I went out to Costa Rica and Panama and worked on a Netflix series, Night on Earth. And then after that I started work with the same company that I'd been out to um, Belize for cats, I started filming for Earth at Night in Colour for Apple. So I was their second camera mostly. I went out to Brazil with Warwick Sloss and filmed termites at night, then went out to Indonesia with Mark Payne Gill and filmed tarsiers. Really, really cool to be working on that series. So that took us to the end of 2008. 18. 2019 started really amazingly. I worked with Martin Kolbeck out in Namibia and we were filming hyenas and they were hunting at a seal colony on a beach. Amazing, amazing one to work on. And then I went out to Finland and I was supposed to be there as second camera but ended up getting principal photography on a sequence about brown bears. And then after that, and I'd applied for a bursary position on Green Planet, the BBC got in touch and I was awarded that. So the following year, in 2019 into 2020, I spent that whole year travelling around working on the next big series, Green Planet. And I'm, it's not been out yet, so I'm not going to really divulge anything. Throughout my career, I've heard about people getting the BBC bursary, the camera bursary. And so it's been something to aim for. It feels really nice to have been selected for this really specialist role. And hundreds upon hundreds of people apply for these jobs. And for me to be picked was an honour, really. Something, it felt really special and really nice to know that people valued your work and trusted your abilities enough to work on a big, big series and travelled all around the world, got to film again with David Attenborough, got to just see amazing, amazing things and work with an amazing team. And that pretty much takes us up to pandemic times and, and so that is ten years of, of my, my journey. And hopefully you'll see that I've worked on some really, really amazing things, but there were also times where it was really quite slow. And, and there were times where I didn't know if I was going to have enough work to carry on as a, as a camera person, as a camera assistant. The last few years, everything picked up and took off. And, and now I'm here on a shoot, about to go somewhere really cool, do something really cool that I can't talk about. But I am professional cameraman. I remember a couple of people saying early on it'll take about 10 years to become a wildlife cameraman and I didn't really believe them. I don't even know if I would have done this if I thought it would take 10 years but it pretty much has from from first starting in the industry to to now it's been about 10 years. It's a long slog to get to where I am and, and I to be honest still feel like I'm right at the beginning of my journey as a cameraman. What I'm trying to say with this is it takes a long time and you build up a relationship with people as you work and you can't do that overnight. 
you have to build that relationship up. It just takes time. If wildlife camera person is what you want to do, be ready for it to take longer than you expect, but it's so worth it. Go for it. If there's any questions you have, I won't be able to answer them straight away because when this goes live, I'll be in the middle of nowhere, but I will answer them when I get back. If there's any other topics you want me to cover, let me know. And there's going to be more coming out in the following week. So don't forget to subscribe, even hit the notification button. And if you like this, give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you next week. Bye.